everyone, so I apologize for earlier, I'm not sure what happened. Um, I think it might have had to do something with the fact that I was uh, recording the session, uh, because as soon as I changed the device, the sound worked, so we could have the session, uh, but as a consequence I wasn't able to film it, so... Uh, but uh, we thought it would be a good idea to do it again, uh, and I'm going to use my time machine over there, that floating thing, just reverse time, and uh, do it all again. So, chords over melody. The reason why I chose this topic is because I want to give you guys a sort of tool to use to get better or to navigate uh, songwriting. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to build a melody first and that is going to be based off of a scale. And the scale that I chose is the major scale. The reason why I chose this scale is because it's, um, I could argue, the most important scale that you will ever learn in guitar. Uh, and that's because, and in music in general, because everything is an edited version of the major, of the major scale. So <coughs> if we start with the major scale, we can play it like this. So that would be that contains the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, okay? Now, I'm going to play this as a mode, meaning I'm going to extend it, so I'm going to do... So what I'm doing here is the C major scale up to the fourth note um, of the scale. So the mode is just a subset of the scale. It's just showing the scale from a different perspective. For example, if I play this, is called the Ionian mode because I played it from the one, from the first note of the scale being C. But if I play it from the two, that would be the Dorian mode. It would be the D Dorian mode, which belongs to the same key. So it would be... So that sounds different than... But I'm effectively, I'm literally playing the same notes. So I'm doing the same thing, but from different places. For the sake of simplicity, we're just going to take the, uh, the C Ionian mode to do this. So, once again. And you can uh, use the file that I sent you. <clears throat> You'll have the tabs there. Now, what I want to do is assign a number to each note. So, <clears throat> I'm starting from C. That would be my one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then, next note would be another one. The reason being <clears throat> because I have a one here, that's the C, and then when I finish the scale I end up playing another C, and then there's another C here. So I'm doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, okay? <clears throat> now we're going to use this scale to build a melody. Building a melody is very simple actually. We just need to select a few notes from the scale. So in this case, let's say we do, I don't know, like in the in the webinar earlier, I did the one, five, and then two. So that's just sort of like a okay, one, five, two. <clears throat> okay. So if I play that uh, in that manner, I can also build chords over that those melodies. So the way to do this is very simple actually. We just take the first note of the melody and we first build a triad. Now what do I mean by triad? Basically a triad is just taking the first, the third and the fifth from that um, considering because we are in the major scale we're using one, three, five. So we have one, three, five. <clears throat> you might know that as the C major chord. Right? Is it one, three, five. <clears throat> but I'm going to use the scale to try and build it. So, if we have the five, that's the five. Uh, and then let's say, for example, I want to use the one here. Okay, so now I have a five and a one. And bear in mind, it doesn't matter how you arrange these notes. So, you can, I can put these notes in sort of like whatever, whatever place I want. As long as I play one, three and five, that will always be a major chord in this case. So, starting with a five, one, and then let's say I want to go down the scale and find another three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. So how about that one? 
I can go five, one, three. That's pretty good. And I have a major triad within. Um, however, I can't really strum that chord. I can play like this, which is fine, you know. But what if I want to add a little bit more to the chord? So, <clears throat> once again, I picked a melody. I started with the first note. I built a triad using one, three, five that I have arranged as five, one, three. And now what I'm going to do is add other intervals from the scale. So if you look at the bar, you can notice that this is a six if you count. So if I go in reverse, four, three, two, one, seven, six, and then five, four. So these two notes are actually in the scale, but there are six and four. <clears throat> and together they sound like this. See? So if I play this, it has a way different sound than just playing. It's more, let's say, uh, wider sounding because, well, I have more notes, but actually what is interesting here is the clash between the notes. So what do I mean by that? If you notice here, I have a three, right? Here I have a four. So three and four are actually very close intervals. But here I'm playing them in a sort of like, I'm playing them one octave apart, but it doesn't matter because our, our ear perceives the distance between three and four regardless of the octaves. So if I do, you have that very clashing sound, right? That is in the scale, but at the same time is supported by the triad. So I've got... Which is why you kind of have something like, you think of the triad as something perfect, and then you add this sort of like imperfection to it in a sense that makes it um, more interesting. So that's one way of thinking about it, let's say. Um, and then, that is my first chord, so I have like that, yeah? Then I said I'm going to play two, five, uh, one, two, five. My second note would be a five. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing, which is I'm going to build a triad first. So the triad from five, applying the one, three, five rule, would be <clears throat> five, seven, and then two, right? And I'm literally going to do the same thing, arrange them in a different way. So if I do five, seven first, let's say, and then there's another two here, I get the next triad of that note. Okay, so that's all good. But if you look here again, I have these two strings, which is the which are the B string and then the G string. <clears throat> if you look at the scale, the B, the B, <clears throat> the C major would be a seven. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's our seven. So I have another seven. So that's cool. And then I have a G, which is the five. So I just literally kind of duplicate the notes. And I have that sound. Yeah. So that's my second chord, which corresponds to the fifth. So my melody from one to five became uh, so you can kind of hear like the notes inherent in those chords, right? <clears throat> the third chord I said uh, the third note is the two. So if I'm doing the same thing, two for six. Uh, let's say I'm starting with the six and then I'm adding a two. And then I'm adding a five. No, because I said two for six, so that'll be six, <coughs> two, and four. So it'd be <coughs> that sound, right? And then if I play the B, if I bar that, that would be a six. And then if I play this, then that would be a two. So I've got. But fundamentally, I'm preserving those notes. I'm, I'm playing six, two, four, six, two. 
So that's my chord that corresponds to this to this two. So all together we have which now became Yeah. So you can now add rhythm to this. You can play it, let's say how you want to play this but the point of this exercise is that I took something simple like literally two notes of the melody I then <clears throat> applied one three five to each note and then in the last stage I decided well what other intervals can I add to make this the chord a little bit more interesting but the first step was to just like the second step was just to use the one three five right before um, after choosing the melody so there you go. You can use that exercise, uh, you know, in your in your composition. You can use it in your practicing to develop like different voicings, different licks, um, and yeah, see where that takes you. But uh, I want to expand a little bit more on this. And let's say, for example, what if we're doing all of this, but we don't want to stick to the C major scale. We want to change that to another key. So. Remember in the beginning I told you that the major scale is the most important scale in, in music and the reason is because it's editable. You can discover all the other scales if you just edit the major scale. Now, the major scale, as I said, goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Let's say, for example, <coughs> to my first chord, which is uh, this one. Which is I said I said it's using like uh, five one four six and then three there. What if instead of four we're going to play sharp four? So I'm taking the four that would normally be in the major scale and I'm making that a sharp four. The sound would be. sort of changing key or adding a note that's outside of the C major scale. So, but at the same time, I'm preserving the other notes. So I'm preserving the five, I'm preserving the one, you know, I'm preserving the three and the six, and I'm just changing the this four, which was kind of like optional anyway, uh, and I'm making it into sharp four, right? So I get, now you can use this trick let's say or this this technique when you're moving from a chord to another so for example if I'm doing like a... right so just sort of like to add a little bit of uncertainty if you want uh, to your playing you know which adds a bit more makes everything more adventurous um, so yeah, and you can do that with any sort of like note as long as uh, what I'm doing here, I'm kind of going back to the key. So I'm just adding that as a hint. I could turn this into like a, you know, and I'm improvising and then going back to the scale. Say that one, just hinting to it and then sort of going back to the C major, right? So I'm just, pointing towards that, but I'm not actually staying there too much, if that makes sense. Um, so that's one way you can use this approach to just think of other, of other uh, well, intervals to play and uh, improvise and uh, obviously uh, compose in a different way. So now uh, I'm going to look at some of the questions you guys asked uh, and uh, address them here. So Brian said, I keep thinking inversions. Well, that's because most of them are inversions. So um, as I said, when I started building the first chord, I did one, three, five. And what I do here, I did like five first and one. So I've literally inverted the one, three, five. I started with the five and one, right? So that is an inversion. That's correct. Um, I just 
don't like you can think of it as an inversion that's good to know but in terms of making this stuff up i'm not like um spending too much time on trying to think in that way i'm just thinking what's the relationship between the notes well this is a five this is a one this is a four and i'm trying to to react to that more you know and to sort of like let that um guide the process of writing um yeah so next question i have j Rod said here on the fifth are you playing open strings uh let me see so on the fifth i believe i answered that um <clears throat> i'm playing the yes the yes i'm playing the open strings and as i said the uh the b is actually a seven so the and the g is a uh, fifth so those are all parts of the chord that's why i'm uh, I'm, I'm playing them they harmonize with the chord with the notes then you said when constructing the chords are you starting within the chord family yes so any outside notes are just transition notes hopefully that makes sense you did mention adding notes outside of the scale a little unclear about that yes that's what i mentioned at the end so i do stay within the family of the <clears throat> within the uh, chord family but i'm hinting towards i just hinted towards that uh, sharp four you know to add more tension but i'm eventually going back to the key so once again that kind of sounds like right and then i'm going third chord yeah Paul, are there any notes you wouldn't alter from the scale, such as root third and seventh, but you wouldn't make it a minor third? I'm not sure I understand the question fully, but uh, are there any notes you wouldn't alter from the scale? So, I mean, not necessarily. As soon as you're preserving, it depends in it depends how you're doing it kind of thing. So if I'm just, um, let's say I'm playing like a major, a major chord here, right? So I can make the major third, which is this note, you know, I can just turn that into a flat three. Well, that would be a, a minor, right? So that's not incorrect. It, it would just be called a modulation if I do that, right? So, uh, and then I could go back, let's say to my, maybe I can go to this. So I'm going, So you can kind of experiment with that and see where it takes you, but it's um, it's not a matter of like I wouldn't. It's it's sort of like when you're writing stuff, it's whatever you kind of like that works. You know, there are no in a sense there are no wrong notes if you know how to arrange them. So yeah, um, but that's it. Uh, well. Let me know if you guys have any more questions for me. I'll uh, I'll try to answer them as quick as possible. And uh, yeah, I'll see you for the next webinar.